Hi folks, welcome to another video on the channel and today we are going to be looking at AI noise reduction. Yes, we are. Uh, more specifically, AI noise reduction direct on raw files. Here we are over at DxO's website and looking at their product DxO Pure Raw 3, uh, which is what we are going to use to compare to this. Oh, which is the latest fancy jobby that we've got inside of the latest iteration of Lightroom, which dropped, uh, for me, dropped yesterday. And it's this denoise, uh, reduce noise with AI. The result will be saved as a new DNG. And the old noise reduction or more conventional noise reduction uh, tool for Lightroom, which as we all know was rubbish, to put it politely, um, that's all down here and ostensibly it's all turned off. So, we've got AI denoise inside of Lightroom and we're going to be comparing the output of that to the output of DxO Pure Raw 3. Now, I originally had a 30-day free trial of DxO Pure Raw 2, and that was okay, uh, but I didn't buy it. Uh, then when DxO sent me a, a, an email telling me there was a, a, a new version, DxO Pure Raw 3, and click this link and go and download yourself the free trial of it, I duly did, because I'm like that. Yes, I am. Uh, the only thing is, I was so suitably impressed that I bought it for 115 of my very best British pounds. Yes, I clicked the old buy button after about a week. All right. And so, yeah. And of course, then a few days later, Adobe give us this AI noise reduction over in Lightroom. And uh, so what I'm going to do is do a head-to-head -head test on four or five images uh, shot at very high ISO on both of these and I'll tell you now for nothing I wished I hadn't spent uh, this 115 pounds I really wish I hadn't but so anyway there we go um, I'm going to head off back over to Lightroom and you can see I've got three variants of an image here and I've got five images okay so the center one out of each three is the original raw file and it's got no Lightroom adjustments on it. Oh my God. Yeah. Having said that, it has. So I'll go reset. Uh, so now none of them have got any Lightroom adjustments on them. The, the raw file size. And so here's our first one. Links uh, shot at 20,000 ISO on a camera, which is what? 10, 10 years old, maybe. And so there you go. Um, we've got a Canon uh, 1DX, the original Mark I version, um, here at 12,800 ISO. Uh, we've got another one here at uh, 10,000 ISO. Uh, we've got another one here at uh, 12,000 ISO. And we've got one here at 16,000 ISO. And... Uh, I'm sure you'll agree that is uh, well exposed to the right, is it not? Yes. All right. Uh, but it isn't clipped, even though the, we've got a little clipping indicator on there. So, the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how I've done the DxO variants. Okay. So, what I've done, to be fair, you see, in Lightroom, the way I'm working it, if I go to lens corrections, we've got no remove chromatic aberration checked and we've got no enable profile corrections checked. So there's no lens correction and no chromatic aberration correction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do the same thing inside of DxO. However, if we go to the details panel, um, we've got sharpening turned on at default. I'm actually going to turn off the lens softness control 
inside DxO because I don't want to apply any DxO sharpening to the image uh, just in case it goes sort of out of control because that com sharpening component I won't be able to control in Lightroom. So I'm just going to use Lightroom's default sharpening on everything, okay, be it from Lightroom or DxO. Righty, and of course everything will come back into Lightroom. Well, it's already here actually because I'm cheating this video uh, because it takes so long to make. Uh, that's my machine's fault, not the software's fault. So, how do we set up with uh, DxO? I'm just going to hover over the untouched raw file that's got Lightroom's background crap all over it. And we're going to go right click and we're going to go show in Finder. If you're on a Windows machine, that'll be show in Explorer. Right click on the image and go open with. And we're going to go to DxO Pure Raw 3. And here it is opening up. And take note of what you can see here. Uh, that is fundamentally uh, your only view. You don't really need a bigger view or preview um, because you can't adjust anything. Not really. And so if we click process now, and you can see here are the options that are turned on by default. Um, I'm actually going to allow DxO to correct for chromatic aberration, but not for vignetting. Uh, and not for lens distortion and as I said I'm leaving the softness off okay so that's what we're going to do and ostensibly I would click start processing but I don't need to because I've already got it down here you're going to have to trust me on that one okie dokie so that's how I'm set up for DxO now when it comes to Lightroom what we're doing is we're going to click denoise and the Lightroom variant is down here. But patience is a virtue, everybody. We'll do the contrast and compare shortly. Now, because of the crazy slowness of my machine, this is going to take a couple of minutes to render a preview. But you should by now be able to see that this preview is at greater than 100%. Whether it's at 200 or 300, I can't quite work out. Um, but, well, there you go. But what I suggest you do is click this little uh, magnifying glass here down in the bottom right corner, and that will take you out to a fit to screen view. And then you can click on an area where you want to see, a bit like that, Let's go for the end of the nose, and there we go. And if we just shift it across a little bit, and we'll just wait for that to load its preview. If you're on a modern Mac, or if you're on a, a fairly up-to-date Windows machine, this will be working instantaneously. You wouldn't have to wait for it. But anyway, I'm just going to uh, shut up for a minute, and then I'll chop this bit out of the video and come back to you when it's actually loaded to show you the variation. Okay, so there we go. I'm back because it's actually finished making its preview. Um, I can't work out if there's a way of actually varying the magnification of this preview or not. But uh, we can now, uh, in real time, uh, basically choose our amount of denoising. So there's a denoise amount of 1. There's a denoise amount of 100. So... What I suggest you do is sort of slide it back to its minimum and then bring it up to where you feel it is just about just about good enough for you. Um, I actually find that the default amount of 50 uh, works quite well in uh, most cases. Uh, well, in all cases that I've tried so far. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it at its defaults so that, you know, I mean, it's sort of on a on a bit of a level par with DxO Pure Raw 3, uh, which just seems to work at its own defaults anyway, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. So the minute I click Enhance here, the, the job will start. On my machine... It takes an inordinate amount of time 
to create these DNGs. Uh, but don't forget, that's my machine at fault there, not the software's. So I'm actually not going to click enhance. You're going to have to take my word for it. Uh, this is the shot that comes out. This one here. All right. So what I want to do is contrast and compare these two here. So what I'm going to do is I think I will bring uh, the DNG Deep Prime version, uh, which is there. And we'll go into the uh, view here where we have a reference image. And I'm going to drag this one in here, which is the, the enhanced noise reduction DNG out of Lightroom. So uh, this one we can still change if we want to. This one we're stuck with. Uh, but if I just uh, sort of click on there, uh, to bring that up to 100%, click on there and bring that one up to 100%. I can't really see uh, uh, any difference. Not really. Um, within the uh, Lightroom generated DNG versus the Deep Prime DNG, we could argue that the there is a slightly greater degree of fine grain noise in the out of focus background on the Lightroom generated DNG as opposed to the Deep Prime DNG, um, but I actually quite like it, and we can control that uh, with masking. All right, sharpening masking. So that's Deep Prime on a twenty thousand um, ISO image, Deep Prime EXD or Deep Prime XD, I should say, Pure Rule Three. And this is the Lightroom variant. Okay, and in reality, I mean, you tell me, is there much of a difference? Uh, not really. And if I actually come out of the reference view, uh, by clicking on there, and I go to the actual Lightroom generated denoise AI DNG, I can just tweak the sharpness down a little bit and then hold down the Alt key, go to the masking panel, take the sharpening off the background, and uh, now it looks virtually as smooth as the DXO one. And I like a bit of fine-grained noise uh, in my images. Just makes them look more real. I do not like overly super smooth backgrounds. So that's that one. So let's come to this Canon shot here of uh, this Gossok in a very dark forest. Alrighty, uh, that's the raw file. There is the Deep Prime, and there is the Lightroom DNG. Right, so what we're gonna do now? What I really want to do is take the Lightroom one and the DxO variant, and I want to shift them into the library module and then go for a side-by-side -side comparison first off and we'll do it this way and just wait for them to render out and they look um, pretty damn good from a sharpening point of view please note if you remember i actually took the lens softness compensation switch control in dxo and turned it off yeah doesn't need it okay so let's switch out to um, the develop module and let's come here and let's drop um, this image not that one this one um, over there for comparison uh, let's sort of bring it down a little bit and of course I'm looking at the wrong blooming one aren't I I should be looking at this one okay so there is the uh, Deep Prime EX, uh, Deep Prime XD version, and all I'm going to do is just come to the Basics panel, and I'm just going to add a bit of exposure, and you can see he's coming up lovely. And uh, what else do we need to do? Not a lot else. Let's just pull him over there. Look at the noise reduction in the background and the overall sharpness of the bird uh, both look great 
and if we come over here and look at the Lightroom variant uh, with its just its default settings um, looks equally as good uh, but like I say if I was to switch over to control this shot and then just come into the sharpening panel where are we details sharpening just pull the sharpening off just a little smidge hold down the alt key grab hold of the masking slider move it over to the right let it go and then come back to this image okay and they are pretty much the same little bit of fine grain noise from the dxo variant little bit of fine grain noise from the lightroom variant they're not 100 percent identical but they are equally as good in my opinion and this just really makes me wish i hadn't spent 115 quid on this one because uh, as of yesterday um, i'm finding i don't really need it so let's move over to the next shot and there is our raw file of good old brutus uh, poor old boy he's dead now but uh, well there you go and you can see that the dxo deep prime one is a little bit on the dark side same as the previous shot was and so what we'll do is we'll just come and give it a little tap of exposure rather like that you see how much you can turn the exposure up and uh, we're not generating any noise um you know considering it's, considering it's not a true dng this dxo has got a lot going for it it really has so we could turn that up to there let go let's just have a look at these two thumbnails that's a bit a bit much really uh, more, most likely a bit better there come over to uh, this dng here which is the one from uh, lightroom and there we go just turn it up make them look the same click on that one go to contrast and um, compare and let's take this one up there and then don't forget click on that one there and so now we are looking at the lightroom variant on the left okay like that and the slightly adjusted uh, dxo variant there uh, from a noise potential point of view no difference whatsoever and um, from the rendering point of view little tiny tiny difference in favor of lightroom and it is these little very very fine bristles underneath brutus's chin as you can see they have got an even amount of definition across them and here on the dxo deep prime variant uh, they are looking more of a gray smudge uh, than a finely detailed thing all right let's put it like that so that's a that's a definite advantage to this particular shot inside of uh, lightroom's aid noise variation as opposed to dxo's variant okay let's move on to the next shot again you can see that the dxo uh, variant is a little bit lighter a little bit darker i should say than the uh, lightroom variant and if you notice the raw file um is exactly the same so what you can say about the Lightroom variant of the DNG is the DNG is going to look exactly the same tone saturation wise and uh, tonal distribution wise. It's going to look exactly the same as the raw file. So what you could do is actually go and do some changes to the raw file before you actually do the denoise. All right you'll still get a good workable DNG out of it. And don't forget, it is a true DNG that you're getting out of this, uh, unlike the one that you get out of DxO or Topaz, come to that matter. So uh, what we're going to do here, just to briefly pre-see this, 
and um, we'll just turn up the exposure and that's all it is really it's just an exposure differential and uh, I'm just going by the thumbnails uh, to be quite honest with you um, there might be a slight, of, uh, a slight colour temperature difference here but uh, what I'll do is we will select the um, reference view again and then I will drag the Adobe Lightroom variant in as the reference image and uh, there it is so let's come down let's have a look at the uh, head of this eagle and there you go uh, no difference at all none that I can see absolutely none and uh, you know 115 pounds um, I'm not going to use the word free although ostensibly if you're already a Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop creative cloud photography package customer for less than a tenner a week that's 10 British pounds yeah um, which I think is exceptionally good value for money um, just for Photoshop because don't forget I've been at this that long um, I can remember when Photoshop was the best part of a grand yes <laughs> So, you know, when you think about it, as far as I'm concerned, Lightroom's free, but I know not every not every one of you thinks that way. And, you know, you're all free to think the way you like, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, I mean, come on. 115 quid uh, built, and this option is now built into Lightroom. So if you are already a Lightroom user, um, you don't need to go and buy um, a noise reduction plugin such as DxO if you're doing this sort of work. I would never run noise reduction over a landscape raw file because I always shoot my landscapes on a tripod at base ISO so they've got no noise in them anyway. Alrighty, but some people do have to contend with noise in landscapes. I know they do. So you're going to fall somewhere between um, my stool on landscapes and working like this. Uh, but working with long lens wildlife images, this should tell you all you need to know about the differences between uh, DxO Prime in this case and the new workings in Lightroom. And we'll come to last eagle shot. Um, here it is and we'll come to a normal view and as I said yeah no, that is most definitely exposed to the right badly composed and I was looks makes me look like I was drunk doesn't it this is because you're standing on a wibbly wobbly boat alrighty so that's the image that's been sent straight in to this new fancy uh, details panel edition of Denoise AI to produce a new DNG and that DNG is there and as you can see it looks identical to the raw file in every way shape and form even though it is jumping about a bit um, but it's been severely denoised okay um, very very nice now if we go and look at the DNG out of DxO uh, there it is um, again it's turned the exposure down so it is what it is isn't it uh, but let's I'm not going to lighten this up because uh, this doesn't look too bad now um, because the exposure was to the right on this shot here so I'm going to drop the exposure on the Lightroom generated noise reduced DNG and I don't think that's too bad. We'll come into a reference view and we'll take the DxO shot this time and put that in as the uh, main reference. And we will just have a look here. So I can now come and click on the Lightroom one. And this needs adjusting. And here's the beauty of exposing to the right. You can see this image is uh, saying it's ever so slightly clipped in the blue channel uh, but that's no matter and so what we'll do is we will bring the exposure down until we get all the color and detail back in the feet uh, we'll bring a bit of contrast out of it 
uh, rather like that and then maybe just bump up the white a little bit and bump up the shadows a little bit um, we can see blue in the feathers so we need to sort of take that away a little bit rather like that and uh, Bob's your uncle there is a 16,000 ISO image um, adjusted uh, and denoised in Lightroom and here is the self same image over in uh, DxO and so what we'll do is we will swap this out for the reference image rather like that and swap this out from DxO as the working image great stuff okay so now what we can do is make the DxO look a little bit more like the uh, Lightroom variation and so we could bring the exposure down uh, making sure we get the feet back and uh, take a little bit of contrast out of it uh, maybe add a little bit of vibrance or a little bit of saturation and then let's just have a look uh, we could then go and warm it up a little bit and uh, fundamentally aim to uh, end up with images that look relatively similar so we can now have a look at the head and the level of noise in the very out of focus background and uh, have a look at the head and out of focus background there and so you can see again no difference not really i mean superb noise reduction out of lightroom with its new ai in a correct properly formatted dng and equally as good uh, the deep prime dng adjusted so both images look pretty much the same um, let's minimize the views or the widths of these panels and in fact we'll take them away and we'll shut down the uh, film strip and uh, there you go hey ho folks don't know what you think about that but you know i am in the position now where i wished i hadn't paid 115 quid for dxo it's useful for teaching purposes and of course if you are not a creative cloud subscriber um dxo would prove extremely beneficial for you um, especially if you're working with raw therapy or dark table because you know you'd still have to be on either a mac or a pc because the dxo deep prime is not available for linux so you know linux users sadly not as well catered for as mac or pc users crying shame in it so i mean that yes i do i wasn't being sarcastic not one bit of it so uh, anyway that's it from me folks that's a comparison on some of my super high iso wildlife images uh, which show a great propensity for exhibiting noise in out of focus areas and uh, i've removed the noise using the latest iteration of dxo pure raw 3 and very good it is and uh, also the latest iteration of lightroom and there it is and uh, seriously guys plus or minus a couple of percent i can't tell the difference all right so there you go all right guys and gals hope you found that useful hope you found it interesting stay safe stay well and until the next time keep taking the pictures don't do anything i wouldn't do so that gives you plenty of scope and i'll see you next time to root <laughs>